Hello there. Two years ago, I made a video titled, What if Jehovah's Witnesses are right? And in the space of that two years, that video has gone on to be one of the most popular videos on my channel. In fact, I actually mentioned this video towards the end of my book, where I talk about the experience of a young man named Ryan who stumbled on this video and he relates that it played some part in his awakening from his indoctrination because he saw the title of the video and he liked the idea of an ex-Jehovah's Witness or so-called apostate playing devil's advocate and he wanted to see what an apostate would have to say about the possibility of Jehovah's Witnesses having the truth of their teachings being true. And so he was surprised to find that the video made him think. Now, it might be that you've not watched the video. Uh, if you haven't watched it, and especially if you're a Jehovah's Witness, please just go back and watch that video. If you have watched it, allow me to just recap what was in it. But basically, the gist of the video was to say, well, let's grant everything to Jehovah's Witnesses. Let's assume that everything they teach is true and that everything they have to say about the future is true. Um, what can we look forward to if that's the case? And I said, well, what will happen is that billions of people, bear in mind there are 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses, and over 7 billion people on the planet who we can quickly, you know, say with confidence that we're talking about 7 billion people whose lives are in the balance. That staggering amount of people will be massacred by God if the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses are true. And after this massacre, after this worldwide genocide, in which men, women and children have just been mown down, um, the earth will be landscaped and turned into this new uh, ut utopia. I call it a dystopia, but the idea is that, is that it's a paradise. But this paradise will basically be inhabited by Jehovah's Witnesses and a good, a good part of their work, at least to begin with, will be you know, concealing the evidence of this atrocity, the biggest, uh, the biggest act of genocide, the biggest act of evil ever to take place on planet Earth. You know, a good, a good amount of time will need to be spent just covering up the evidence that this has ever happened so that the occupants of this new world don't have to have their consciences troubled too much by, you know, the odd encounter with um, human cadavers. Well, I say the odd encounter, I mean 7 billion people. I think I say in the video, imagine how many people it would be just in a city like New York. Imagine the mountains of bodies, in, especially in built-up areas in cities. So, you know, you can call that paradise if you like. Um, and Jehovah's Witnesses do call it paradise, but I would argue that you're only able to call it paradise if you don't think about it too much. And I think this is one of the ironies of, uh, of life as a Jehovah's Witness, is that it does promise a great deal. Um, but when you are a Jehovah's Witness, you're not encouraged to think about it in quite that way. And in fact, the way that Jehovah's Witnesses uh, gear their literature and gear their message is deliberately designed to obfuscate the whole situation. Let me give you an example. And the reason, by the way, why I'm doing this follow-up video, I should add, is to deal with some of the counter-arguments. Well, one specific counter-argument that I keep getting, because I'm obviously getting notifications now. <laughs> Over the last two years, it's just been beep, 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 beep of Jehovah's Witnesses who stumble on the video and they, you know, raise their objections, which is fine. It's great. I'm really glad that there are Jehovah's Witnesses watching the video. Um, but I thought I'd do this follow-up video to deal with those objections. But allow me to first point you to the JW.org page where it says, Do Jehovah's Witnesses feel that they are the only people 
who will be saved. That was uh, a page that I was referred to by one Jehovah's Witness apologist. And, uh, well, let me read it. It says, No, many millions who lived in centuries past and who weren't Jehovah's Witnesses will have an opportunity for salvation. Well, that doesn't answer the question, does it? Because this is talking about people who've long since died, and it's saying, well, they'll get the chance to become Jehovah's Witnesses um, after they're resurrected. Because if you read on, it says, the Bible explains that in God's promised new world, there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. And this verse in Acts 24, 15, this is... This again has been kind of brought to my attention as though this excuses it all because Jehovah's Witnesses are saying to me, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses who don't really understand their beliefs that well are saying to me, well, everyone's going to get resurrected. It doesn't matter how many people Jehovah kills at Armageddon because they're all going to get resurrected. <laughs> um Please research in your publications what this scripture is saying. Because according to Jehovah's Witnesses, in Acts 24.15, when it talks about a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous, the righteous are supposed to be Jehovah's Witnesses. The unrighteous are supposed to be those who didn't become Jehovah's Witnesses because they died before Armageddon came. And before they had the chance to make that decision, that's the unrighteous. So it's, and that's half of the answer. So straight away, half of the answer in this FAQ doesn't answer the question. The question being, do Jehovah's Witnesses feel that they are the only people who will be saved? Well, this, these unrighteous who get resurrected after Armageddon, which And when people have that question in mind, they're thinking about Armageddon. They're thinking, will I survive Armageddon? So this bypasses Armageddon entirely and takes us to after Armageddon. And it says, this, this group of people who died before Armageddon, they'll have a chance to become Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> that doesn't answer the question. And all it's doing is really saying, actually, the only terms in which survival uh, of Armageddon or after Armageddon is tenable is acceptance of the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses. And then I'll continue with the answer. Additionally, many now living may yet begin to serve God and they too will gain salvation. In other words, some people who are alive now might become Jehovah's Witnesses. So again, <laughs> It, well, it's, it's answering the question, but it's basically admitting that you're only going to be able to make it through if you become a Jehovah's Witness. And then the final sentence is just basically, whoever's writing this FAQ is just basically decided to uh, parachute out of the discussion entirely by saying, in any case, it's not our job to judge who will or won't be saved. That assignment rests squarely in Jesus' hands, which is an obfuscation because when you read the literature, it's true that you know that the, the, the assignment is supposed to rest with Jesus, but all of the literature that's been published by Watchtower says that the decision that Jesus will make is that only those who serve God will make it through Armageddon and will survive into the paradise. And when, it, and when we're saying serve God, the only acceptable way of serving God, according to a Jehovah's Witness, is to be a Jehovah's Witness. So this is, this is total obfuscation, and it doesn't stand up to any scrutiny whatsoever. But that's the sort of reasoning that Watchtower uses to dodge the bullet, to try and get out of the fact that its message is so doomsday. A message that essentially says, agree with us or you deserve to die. Another thing that I think I mentioned in the original video, or, or certainly in another video, is about the preaching work. If you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, and you genuinely believe that good people will survive Armageddon, regardless of whether they're Jehovah's Witnesses. So let's, 
take that final sentence, for example. Jesus has the assignment of judging who will survive Armageddon, who will make the grade and who won't, who will be uh, annihilated by fireballs and collapsing buildings, and who will escape unscathed. Jesus has that responsibility. Now, if you can make it through all of that just by being a good person, so just by having a good heart, and Jesus reads your heart and thinks that person doesn't deserve to get um, flattened by a collapsing building. That person doesn't deserve to fall down a gaping chasm. That person doesn't deserve to be on the end of a fireball. What's the point of the preaching work? What possible point could the preaching work have if Jesus is the final arbiter and Jesus will basically save everybody who's good? We might as well have Armageddon now, get it over with, and then afterwards debrief everyone. Debrief all of the survivors who are all good. We know they're good because they've survived. Let them know what's just happened. We don't need the preaching work. And that's something that Watchtower has long recognised or has long said about the preaching work, that it's a case of survival. That by preaching to people, we are giving them the chance of surviving through into Armageddon. And, another, and they even go so far as to say that if you don't engage in the preaching work, you're blood guilty. You're blood guilty because you have deprived someone the opportunity to survive Armageddon by giving them the life-saving message that they need to hear. If that alone is not clear enough evidence of what Watchtower really believes about Armageddon, I don't know what is. Now, if you're watching this as a Jehovah's Witness and you still just can't get your head around the fact that you are in a religion that teaches that seven billion people deserve to be massacred, men, women and children, for the crime of not being a Jehovah's Witness, if you are convinced that it's not that bad, that I'm uh, somehow um, not explaining things fairly, I would seriously recommend that you go to jwfacts.com and there is a page titled, let me see, Salvation Only for Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, this page has been written by my friend Paul Grundy, and it is an excellent one-stop selection of quotes from decades of Watchtower publications explaining in Watchtower's own words what Jehovah's Witnesses believe about Armageddon and about who survives it. Now, rather than read all of the quotes, I've just selected a few quotes for you. I'll start with one from a 1989 Watchtower. Only Jehovah's Witnesses, those of the anointed remnant and the great crowd, as a united organisation under the protection of the supreme organiser, have any scriptural hope of surviving the impending end of this doomed system dominated by Satan, the devil. So only those of the anointed remnant and the great crowd, so in other words, people going to heaven and people who are you know, Jehovah's Witnesses with an earthly hope. Only they have a scriptural hope of surviving Armageddon. Next quote from a 2006 Watchtower. Just as Noah and his God-fearing family were preserved in the ark, survival of individuals today depends on their faith and their loyal association with the earthly part of Jehovah's universal organisation. So that's from a 2006 watchtower. Now we have a 2001 watchtower. Is it presumptuous of Jehovah's Witnesses to point out that they alone have God's backing? Actually, no more so than when the Israelites in Egypt claimed to have God's backing in spite of the Egyptians' belief, or when the first century Christians claimed to have God's backing to the exclusion of Jewish religionists. That's from the 2001 Watchtower. Next up is a 1983 Watchtower. Similarly, Jehovah is using only one organisation today to accomplish his will, to receive everlasting life in the earthly paradise. We must identify that organisation 
and serve God as part of it. Again, these are all quotes directly from Watchtower publications that expressly say that if you want to survive Armageddon, the thing to do is to become a Jehovah's Witness. Now, I think the confusion for some Jehovah's Witnesses uh, comes from the fact that Watchtower doesn't say things as clearly as they should. So in my video, What If Jehovah's Witnesses Are Right, I put things in very stark, unambiguous language. And I say, you know, imagine surviving through into a world where you have to clean up after the biggest act of genocide that has ever been committed, where you have to spend eternity praising the perpetrator of the biggest crime the universe has ever seen and, and participating in covering up evidence of this crime. I'm personally not remotely surprised that Watchtower is so ambiguous on this because it doesn't bear thinking about. The moment you give it any thought, how could you possibly support a religion that teaches that? It goes against our innate morality, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't challenge Jehovah's Witnesses on it respectfully if you have the opportunity to do so. And I would certainly encourage any Jehovah's Witnesses who've stumbled onto my channel and who are watching this video or the previous video, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. If you don't want to go on jwfacts.com, make it, make it the focus of your personal study, answering the question, who will survive Armageddon? Who will not survive, on, survive Armageddon? Make it your project to research those questions. That's about all I've got time for in this video. If you want to watch more videos, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you for watching.